What's up, y'all? Guess what, y'all? They still working your girl. They still working me. And it's like, what did I do? What did I do? I worked so hard yesterday, y'all. Like, my back was on fire. But my knee held up. I'm proud of that. I'm so proud of that. Um, Yeah, man. I worked so hard. I was, like, looking for other jobs. I mean, I ain't going nowhere, but I thought about it. Uh, <laughs> it was it was real, though. I bet it'll die off soon, and I'll be back to being bored. But today was a decent day. Today was a better day for my offspring. And life seems to be back. You know, you just got to trust God. You know, I heard today that um, don't be afraid is mentioned 365 times in the Bible so you know that's gotta mean something you know what I'm saying God is speaking to us so you know I'm really trying to work on that work on my trust in God and and all that good stuff because that's really all we got man when we're going through that is really all we got let's see what else we got here (laughs) <laughs> I'm sorry I'm laughing at an email pretty funny right um I hate when I like check the emails and then when I'm talking to y'all cause then I'll be like I see a bill come through like huh property insurance what y'all fools talking about you know what I mean but uh let's see here actually I'm about to look at this bill. While I'm looking at this bill, let's continue chit-chatting with y'all. How was y'all day? Did y'all get any bills today? Because I did. Um, this whole thing they do now where they make you like check to make sure. Let me text your phone. Like all these checks and measures every time. But I ain't mad at it. I guess I got to do what I got to do right. I mean, I don't want nobody to fraudulently pay my bill. You know, where would that be? And mind you, this is just a freaking property insurance insurance bill and car insurance. Gotta love it. All the ripoffs in life. You know what I'm saying? But thank God that he will restore my finances after I pay these bills. Amen. Uh, Let's see what we got here. L.A. federal judge has ordered Nicki Minaj's husband, Kenneth Petty, to serve up to 120 days on home detention for making threatening remarks toward a specific individual while in the company of somebody with a criminal record. That is really stupid. Um, I've seen this little beef that uh, Nicki Minaj's husband was doing, and I th- everything they do nowadays is publicity stunts, but clearly the judge ain't playing, so he probably might want to sit down somewhere. A Kentucky man died in the emergency room after being stung 15 to 20 times by a swarm of yellow jackets and bees. Dang, man. He was moving a bag of potting soil. Jeez, man. I'm up here complaining about work and then there's this. Um. We don't want to really talk about politicians. Let's see this new story. And I heard a, a screeching. It's all that between a screech and a whistle. Ah! I said, what in the world is this? And I heard a boom. In my whole house, yo. Mike says he didn't realize it was a plane at the time, so he didn't call anybody. The first thought came to me. I said, what's it? A meteorite right come out of space or something? <laughs> I said, well, if the airplane it need to be reported, but the thing was flying is too low. The F 35B airplane wreckage created an extensive debris field. The wreckage is located off Old Georgetown Road. Military security is very tight with numerous red and white signs on uh, My man, like, and I just reported on this yesterday where the pilot, like, ejected from the plane and they couldn't find the plane. But I hope my man, like, gets, like, some money for this because. I, that's emotional distress. That's that's a lot of stuff going on right there. 
Let's see what else. Today marks the the anniversary of um, when Martin Luther King was stabbed in a Harlem department store with a letter opening. He survived that one. He got stabbed by some 40-year-old mentally disturbed woman. So Martin was already knowing people was after him, and I didn't never even know he had got stabbed before. The New England Patriots fan who died at a home game Sunday was punched in the head twice before their medical emergency. Dang. They be getting crazy at these games. Yeah, um... Mana's there's rumors that Kim Kardashian could be dating Odell Beckham. Wouldn't be shocking. Even though I could have swore Odell Beckham has a whole family, but it's never stopped the Kardashian before, huh? <sighs> with extreme weather caused by climate change, Greece is on the front lines with unprecedented flooding and wildfires hitting the country. I can't get enough talking about Deion Sanders. He plays again on Saturday. I can tell you, they put on a good show. I will tell you that. Why is Newark Airport trending? Um, said the mills in Newark El- Airport are very expensive. Can't find a burger that costs less than $7 there. Airport food is expensive, period. I don't know. You know, when you go there, it is, it is, you're going to spend some money and the food is not going to be good. I've never went to an airport and be like, Ooh, that was so good. Like it never in my life, even the ice cream doesn't even take the taste that good at the airport. American, American Horror Story is back tonight and unfortunately um, Kim Kardashian is in that too like I can't we can't we'll never be able to get away from her y'all never it's really annoying Pringles is doing a collab with Caviar I mean no matter no rich no matter how rich a person gets meaning me I would never eat caviar. Um, what else is going on here? Somebody hacked Donald Trump Jr.'s um, account, Twitter account, and announced his dad died and he's going to be running for president. The news is pretty slow today, y'all. I'll check one more source, but there ain't really nothing popping like that. I guess that's a good thing. Besides, I mean, they're still trying to avert this government shutdown. Um, their Hollywood people are still on strike. The UAW for four GM still on strike. Um, yeah. Yeah, nothing with the news, so let's hop over to these 
credits and then we'll get into our story time. I'm going to have some educational story time for y'all tonight. Today we're going to talk about y'all resumes because <laughs> I, yeah, I thought it was playing like last night kicked my butt. I'm not going to work so I've been on my job so long but this is for all you job seekers out there. You know and it's always good to stay sharp period. Let's see. Men who have girlfriends staying over multiple times a week. What is your most I must care for this girl purchase or change for your place? So I know when me and my husband was dating, my husband's really good at accommodating. Like that's one thing that I love about him. So he always makes sure I have my own chargers. Even when we go on a trip to this day. That's the the good thing about us. Like I'm O C D when it comes to like cleaning and stuff, but my husband when it comes to like chargers and like snacks, like my husband's gonna have all my snacks, chargers, everything that I need, water. Like he's really good at that and I love that about him. Um get y'all a single father. I'm telling you, sometimes a single father is be doing what must be done to make you a day woman happy um somebody said a trash can in the bathroom that has a lid I only doesn't want to see her whatever very simple and cheap but meaningful a dedicated charger yep charger for the phone upgrade the toilet paper my husband is a baby wipe man so lots of baby wipes I'm allergic to everything to prepare for the first time I ever spent the night at someone's house. He bought all the freight free and clear detergent and washed everything in it so I wouldn't itch. That's bad. That's nice. I presented my girlfriend with her own toothbrush at my place. She cried. I said she should move some stuff over it and we shopped for some basics together. How come she didn't have her own toothbrush is my question if she was spending the night. Shampoo, yada, yada, yada. Someone said her boyfriend got her a step stool. How would you react if your brother married your ex? Well, I'm interested. I know my husband says he, he wouldn't care, but somebody said laugh and call him dumb. Well, if he did, then he knew my reasons for the breakup and divorce, and then that's on him. Mine lived with my first wife for five years after divorce. I'm pretty sure she had his kid. Dang. They both were poop shows, and I don't F with either of them. Not my circus. I would pity him for his obvious mental illness and would, would disown him. What's falling in love like for men? It's hard to describe, but I feel a strong sense of responsibility and love towards her. Like I do anything to help her if needed. I find myself thinking about her randomly while I work or doing something else. I find myself reminiscing and giggling to myself or our past interactions. I feel I've become fiercely loyal to her. To her. Yeah, doing stuff for us is great. It's like the desire to be her hero or safe haven at the end of the day. I could want nothing more for her but for her to be the person, yada, yada, yada. So it's like all about protection and stuff, which is good. That's what we like. What is the hardest lesson a woman has ever taught you? Don't get into a relationship just because you're lonely. You quickly learn that being alone is way better than being with someone who annoys the heck out of you. That she can lie for 20 plus years. That she is who she is and not who you want her to be. Everybody, that lesson goes both ways. That if she wants to hang out with you, she will make time for you. That lesson also goes both ways. Let's see what the women are talking about. Young women who only find older men attractive. Why? That's my question. Because that's creepy. When I've tried dating guys closer to my age, I just haven't been impressed. 
statement pushier ruder and less respectful of my boundaries i might be physically attracted to them but those qualities are so insanely unattractive and i've only noticed them in under 27 crowd i think older men can be also pushy because they're like old and set in their way so somebody say yeah the truth is i have some daddy issues it was all about looking more adult when I was a teenager. The girls who dated older guys felt more important, more special, because they weren't dating boys. It was something to show off, to boast about. And 90% of those relationships were toxic and unbalanced. Hindsight 2020. Yeah. Daddy issues, a lot of women are saying. Let's see one more. For your mental health, what is something or someone you avoid? The list is long, but like, if I was to just really, like, have to name something, anything that's like, overcrowded that I'm not going to go have fun at, like, because I went to somewhere, a concert, obviously, that was fun, but like, a very crowded mall, like, I avoid the mall, I avoid going places If I do have to go to Walmart, I go when there's, like, nobody there. So, overcrowded places, I avoid them. Somebody says social media. Yeah, your own social media. Alcohol. Smart. Toxic friends. 97% of my family... My daddy always finds a way to turn any discussion into political. Can't stand it. I don't weigh myself regularly. I know roughly how much I weigh because my doctor's office weighs me every time. I'm just a little overweight according to the BMI. I don't have an eating disorder, but I have OCD. And I'm worried I get upset about maintaining a certain weight. That's brave not to weigh yourself because I have to weigh myself sometimes. It just reminds me, like, I got to chill. So, lucky, lucky you. Let's go ahead and get into these story times here. Like I said, I got some remote job tips, some resume writing things that you guys might need. Yes, cetera. Yes, cetera. Uh, I'm still single, 44 years old. So all y'all women out here talking about y'all looking for the man that's six feet tall and dark and all that, say that nonsense. I'm, why am I still single? Explain it to me. <laughs> okay, where are you coming at now? Well, why, well, why are this for you? I think men are the pursuers. So why do you think you're single? I refuse to settle. And what is settling to you? Give me examples of what you would consider so settling. I, I live there free. So I don't want a woman who's all about the entourage, trying to live with the Joneses and be with the Joneses and all that. I don't have time for all that. Okay. Is there a woman with kids? I know you don't have any kids. I'll date a woman with kids. I don't mind. As long as you're willing to have my kids, I'll take care of you and your kids. Just have my kids. I have no kids. Okay. So you want a woman that's willing to have kids, and you you would be a stepfather to her children if she has no, no. I'm going to be a step I'm going to be a father. What? What? Byron coming through. How tall are you? I'm 6'4". Six, four. You're 6'4". Six, okay. Um, you have no kids. And then you... Okay, so you said you got all the sixes. So I'm assuming you make six figures. All the sixes. So all the women out there looking at the other, the other part got that covered too. What y'all talking about? Let's go. Next question. I mean, you're saying, so the reason you feel like you're single is because you don't want a woman that wants to live above her knees? Is there any other reason? No, I know why I'm single. I'm single because women sit there and talk about what they really want, but they don't really want what they're talking about. They want the they want the wedding, but they don't want the marriage. So I'm, I you know, the cousins out there talking about what you want and all that, save it. You don't want it. Because I've been single all these years, and I'm looking, and I'm hunting. Where y'all at? And I'm talking about these black women. I ain't talking about all these other nationalities. No offense to everybody else. I'm talking about my queen. Where y'all at? We here. Well, Bob, are you are you going out on dates with these women? Kendra, if I told you my story about the women I've been on dates with, you would not you would not 
even believe it. Trust me, you would not believe give me, it. Give me one. I, just give me I, one. One. Here in Chicago, I left my person home. Stop the nonsense. I'm all about the game. You left your person home. You ain't trying to pay for nothing. I ain't asked you to pay for nothing. But it's okay. I'm going to pay for everything and let you run your little game and keep it going. That's just one. These women out here, they talking that nonsense. They're not really. They're not about that life. They're not really trying to be about nothing. They just talking. They faking it. Okay, let me ask you about that. Kendra, all these women out here talking about six-figure men and this and all that. First of all, say the six figures. Because before I made six figures, I still saved and I invested over $30,000 a year. So y'all talking about the man that makes six figures, but if if he's spending six figures, what are you really getting? If I'm making $70,000 a year, example, if I'm making $70,000 a year, and I'm investing and I'm saving twenty thousand dollars a year. What would you rather rent? What would you rather have? The man that's making a hundred thousand and in debt because he's spending his hundred thousand, or the man that's making seventy thousand and he's investing and saving twenty thousand. So some of y'all women need to get y'all priorities straight. Next question. I'm ready. I've been working on this show. Lord have mercy. I've been working on this show. I've been sitting and listening to women get on here and they bash black men. And I sit there and accept it and take it for what it is. But I was so happy to get on here so I can tell my story. Y'all got it so confused. It's black men out here ready to be married and ready to slow down. But y'all give us a hard-ass time. Next question. Now, does she have to make a certain amount of money for you? No, she does not. She can work a Dollar General. She can work a Dollar Tree making them $5.75 an hour if she wants to. I'm going to take care of the house. Have my children. Period. That's the difference between some of these males and some of these men. Some of these men worried about what you make it. I don't care what you make. I got all that at home. I take care of all that. So when the women at home with a little high school degree and all that, I love you. I ain't got a problem with you. Them doctors and them nurses and all the master degrees and all that. Some people that said they have to put a title on their name. You can say your title. I don't care about your title. Your title means nothing to me. Why would you like the accomplished woman? I don't have a problem with the accomplished woman. What I have a problem with some of, some of the accomplished women, they're about their career, and then they want to settle down and have a man. And I have a problem with that. If you're really about a relationship, then you'll have the man, and whatever that accomplishment happen, they just happen. I don't have a problem with it, but some of the women that be on your show, Kendra, they be talking about, I have a doctorate, I have this, I have that. I mean, the average man don't care about what you have. We don't care about all that. You can work at Dollar General. You can work at McDonald's. As long as I can come home and you have my children, you can make me a meal if I need a meal, I'm good to go. Nobody care about all that other stuff. Me personally, I don't. Because all you doctors, all you master degree people out there, you got student debt and a bunch of it. So I'll take that person at McDonald's with no student debt over you, the little 100K student debt. Yeah. I'm talking about that because I'm dead freak, so I can talk about all the doctors out there. Let's go. Next question, Ken. They're saying, why are you so angry? I'm, I'll am tell you why I'm angry. I'm angry because I listen to your show, and I hear so many women get on this show, and they sit there and say, six figures. First thing they say is six figures. Now, mind you, I didn't make six figures all my life. So you sat there and knocked me because I didn't make the six figures, but I was a good man never had kids. Y'all talk about these men out here with all these babies, baby mamas, things of that nature. I never had any of that. I worked hard. I was in the military. I did 15 years. I did my time. So y'all knocked me because I didn't make the money. But that's why I'm angry, because y'all sat there and put a price on me, on men like me. So that's why I'm a... Y'all put a price on men like me. And most men would tell you, the most disrespectful thing that you can say about a man is a man that can't provide. So when you put a number on a man, that's hurtful. And most men won't tell you that. And I'm going to tell you that's hurtful to us. If I'm making $60,000 or $70,000 and you telling me I got to make $100,000, you belittle me as a black man. That's hard. So that's why I come off a little bit angry. Okay. Interesting. I mean, he... As a woman who works hard and does my thing, um, one thing that I find a, a problematic with what he said is like, is he does he have a problem with women 
that are achieving our goals. I think that because women have been progressing so fast and becoming the fastest entrepreneurs, becoming, you know, top earners in our community that now is looked at as like, oh, you think you better than me? Like, instead of the men rooting us on, they're more like, I just want you at home with raising my kids whoop, 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 whoop. and it's like dude if we wasn't doing what we're doing now y'all would I mean our whole community would collapse our kids wouldn't go to college or you know and so it's like instead of them cheering us on that we're doing this thing it's like when you say like oh I have a doctorate or oh I have this or I have that it's looked at like oh you hurt my feelings I don't make more as much as you and honestly I don't think women would care about how much a man makes but it's just that I think y'all make the biggest difference about it honestly because instead of like I said cheering us on uh, giving us the support we need to keep going you know either one of us you know we could cheer each other on but listen we live in a society where we have to work we're we're, we're in a recession so if you want to get you a woman that work at mcdonald's knock yourself out bro but don't get mad when some woman is saying i want a man to give you know give me what i need as far as a woman especially if she's a successful woman she has every right to ask for that just like you have every right or you can get you a mcdonald's or a popeye's woman as you stated my friend but you know i just find that problematic when they have a problem with how much I want. I, I see that a lot. Men don't like when women, and I don't even call it bragging, but that's called mm-hmm. achievements. Okay, so since I don't put y'all in all my damn business, I might as well finish telling y'all the rest of this bullshit. So, this is part two of when I met a dude named Tim and like it lost my goddamn mind. So, I told y'all, you know what I'm saying, he had gave me a number, which was his granddaddy number. And you know what I'm saying? He was like, he'd be able to run that house sometime and call me because he ain't had no cell phone. Now, this was back in mid 2000s. They're going to say early 2000s. Probably about 2007. You know what I'm saying? He was a typical hood nigga. It wasn't like he was, you know, he was, he was a $10 man. But anyway, so, y'all, when we first met each other, this man was so cool. So I'm thinking, you know, goddamn, it's, I like this man right here. You know what I'm saying? I want him. I want him. And I was having one back then. Whatever I got, I wanted. I always was like that. I wanted him bad. So every time I would call the number, he would never be there. So I'm like, damn, I gotta try to um get in contact with him some kind of way. I want him bad. So like I said, I'm not from that city, but I had moved there after I graduated high school. But anyway, so I was over at my homegirl house one day, and her dude was over there. And I said, you know a dude named Tim. I don't want to say his last name, but... And he was like, you turn out with a chip, too. I said, yeah, he got a chip, too. Now, y'all, I'm so weird. I always thought flaws was so cute. Like, a flaw to me is attractive. It set a person aside from everybody else. So, a chip, too, I, I love it. He said, yeah, I know Tim. He said, but Tim lived with his wife. So, I said, what? She, he said, yeah. He said, but I got his numbers on his number. So, he gave me... Tim house phone number. So I'm trying to think how in the hell I'ma call this man and he married. How I'ma get him on the phone? Cause I knew he wanted me just like I wanted him. So one day, I don't know what in the hell persuaded me to call this phone. But I had to cook up a good ass idea. I know he had told me he had been looking for a job. So I was I called it. <laughs> I called and act like I was calling him in for an interview. Now, y'all, I talk real, I, I talk real, you know, I can get professional when I need to. So I called the phone and I was like, hello, my please speak with Timothy, such and such. And it was his wife answered the phone. And she was like, who is this? And I said, my name is Yolanda. See, I said my real name so he could remember who I was. I said, this is Yolanda from Manpower. You know, temp service, I'm calling to call her men to come in for an interview for a job. So she didn't say nothing at first. And she said, she said, hold on. And she put the phone down. So I'm thinking she finna go get him, whatever the case may be. So all of a sudden the phone hung up. So I'm like, damn. And all of a sudden I get a call back on that from that number. And I'm thinking it's him. So I'm happy as hell, y'all. I answered the phone, I said, hello. 
thank you for calling manpower and she said bitch <laughs> I know you ain't no damn calling for no manpower I know you ain't Tim fucked around but we really didn't do nothing but we was going to I ain't gonna lie but you know eventually but it never happened cause I don't know but I was like no we didn't I said I don't know him she said bitch stop lying to me I know you calling for my damn husband so I'm like I just hold the phone. And so she called me back. And she was like, look, I don't have no problem with you. She said, Tim always cheating on me. So at that point, she started telling me things that he had told her about me and him meeting that night. And so at this at this point I knew she knew. I didn't try I didn't try to deny it no more. She was, you know, she was like, Tim told me he met you and y'all was all booed up and all this shit. I was like, yeah, we did. She was like, you know, Tim always cheated on me. She said, You said you see how them cuts on his arms? She said, I cut his ass up so many times for cheating on me. I'm like, God, I got scared then. So me and her began to kind of build a friendship. But see, I'm thinking that I'm going to use that to my advantage because that way I can I can see Tim. I can see Tim when I wanted to. I was young then, so I'm stupid. I, I ain't really thinking about this lady inviting me over to her house. So y'all, one day Tim was at work and she he didn't know this. But she had invited me over to their house. So they had just had a baby. Now, mind you, the baby was a little baby. I was so happy to get over there because I'm thinking to myself, I'm finally finna see him. I'm finally finna see him. Y'all won't believe what happened. Stay tuned for part three. This lady. I'm going to remember her next time because I'm not playing no more her videos. I have been using ChatGPT to create my resumes lately, and every resume that I have submitted, I have gotten an interview. So I have to show you guys how to do this. ChatGPT tailors your resume in two minutes. So the first thing I do is go and copy the job description for the job that I'm interested in applying to. So I go over to Indeed, and then I just copy. Then I go over to Google, and I type in ChatGPT. This is the one that I always use, but you can use the one that you're most comfortable with. Now I tell the AI exactly what I need. I need a perfect resume for this job description. The resume should have quantifiable accomplishments using SARS. The skills section should have universal selling propositions. I want you to make sure that the spelling is accurate. And then I also give it some information about my job history. Now I paste the job description. Now you'll see me paste the job description using control V. And you will see chat GPT do its thing. I mean, it is crazy. After chat GPT does its thing, I go over to Microsoft Word and I paste this information into Word and tweak the resume. Now I've went to Microsoft Word and paste the resume and I have tweaked and look how perfect this resume is i mean like so far i'm 10 out of 10 for interviews with these resumes like guys you have to head over to chat gpt now or if you want me to do it for you it'll cost you a hundred dollars but you'll get that job <laughs> follow me for more job tips yo i don't, i hear about chat gpt but i gotta play around with it when i get more learn less busier but if that is the case, then where have you been all my life? I know a lot of us are looking for the non-phone, work-from-home jobs, so let me tell you which job titles to look out for. Best jobs for non-phone entry level are, these are going to be your jobs listed as claims, moderators, customer advocates. And it's real tricky with the customer advocate ones because I've seen a lot of customer advocate descriptions say that you may have to do some outbound calls, but I have seen a lot that just say specifically emails, chats, things like that. So you just have to kind of like check the description, but these are the most common ones. And then I'm actually going to take it a step further and let you guys know what's the most common employers that offer non-phone positions. And keep in mind for these employers and these different jobs, you may not want to use the same exact resume. If you're applying for like a claims position, you want to use your claims resume if you apply for a strictly data entry job you may want to do you know your data entry or your customer service resume if you need help with how to format your resume to match these job descriptions i did go ahead and enter some templates above but these are all of the 
employees that I've seen this year in the last two months offer non-phone positions. So Baby, I know I did find this bad job. Get ready, honey. Get ready. I hope somebody, I'm praying somebody that follows me gets this job. If you get it, you get the interview and stuff. Wait about it until you're a weekend and then share the testimony. Let's do it. Let's start doing it. Like, wait till you're a weekend. Wait till you're a weekend. Nah, 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 nah. Once you get that offer letter, then reach out to me and tell me what's up. All right, y'all. Let me get right into it. Airbnb is hiring remote. They have another position of hey, baby. All right. You look as they say, you could be. All right. So, y'all, I'm so excited about this one. This is a really good one. So, put in Google Airbnb hiring administrative business partner. Now, I'm putting, yeah, 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 yeah. Airbnb hiring administrative business partner. When I say go to Google, that means Google search. Um, Airbnb hiring administrative business partner remote. Okay, hit search. Let me stop playing. Get serious. All right. So when you hit there, the first thing that's going to pop up is going to say Airbnb anywhere. It's going to say administrative business partner, Airbnb anywhere via LinkedIn. It was posted two days ago. All right. So under that, it'll say careers at Airbnb. You can hit that second one or you can hit the first one. But let's hit the second one, the one that talks about careers at Airbnb, careers.airbnb.com. Hit that one, administrative business partner. Boom. All right. It's going to pop up. Airbnb, Airbnb was born 2007. I want to tell y'all something. I had an Airbnb out there in Florida once. Y'all, when I tell you this house was so nice, because a lot of times when you go to Florida, you know, the parking sucks. Like sometimes it depends on what part of Florida, but I had Miami, Florida that I had to go to. So I had rented out this house. But anyway, long story short, because I don't want to put y'all all up in my pieces too much, but those that follow me and hop on my lab, you know, if you know, you know. So um, best experience ever. Nice house. Um, it was like a three bedroom. Was it three bedrooms? Four or something like that. I know one of the rooms had bunk beds. Okay, she gonna keep yakking, but yes, this Airbnb administrative business partner is supposed to pay forty five dollars an hour. So y'all search for that Airbnb. Let me know. Let me know. Keep watching this. If you're someone that is currently looking for a job while you have a job or you're just somebody that's wanted to add a second job and you don't want your first job to find out about it, keep watching this. So recently I discovered that this website has all the right information out there, including how much we make, how long we've been on our current job, and y'all need to check it out. Basically, you'll go on there, request your report, you know. So she's talking about Equifax and you can find your report and all the jobs that you worked at, what's showing up. Mm -hmm. And the way to get around that is you'll have to like free. So if you are applying for a job and you don't want someone else to know what other job you might be working at, pretty much have to freeze your data. So that's what she's saying. With freezing this report, there is a con. The biggest con is if you're trying to apply for new employment and they can't verify this information, they may ask you for proof, including like a pay stub or something like that. But nonetheless, they won't have access to all of this information. You'll kind of be in control of that. I just wanted to basically let you guys know that there is a website like this that exists that has all the information on there. So if you want to know what access these people have when you're applying for these jobs, be sure to go on there and keep in mind not all employers use this but a lot of the major companies do so if you know you work for a major company definitely check this out look at your report mm -hmm. let me tell you something if you let somebody move in your house mm -mm. You that's that lady again miraculously was able to call 911 before she passed away now after the slaying of his two beautiful daughters he disappears he disappears for years yasser saeed was born on january 27th 1957 in egypt he came to the u.s on a student visa in 1983 and became a permanent resident in 1987 he worked as a taxi cab driver and yasser married an american woman named patricia in february of 1987 after they got married they ended up having two daughters and one son amina sarah and islam yasser would often spy on his daughters by video or audio recording them without their knowledge sometimes he would even film them and make crude comments about them and it was even said that he had messed with them in unspeakable ways 
my snakes. <laughs> a police report was filed about the essay, and the girls did give detailed statements to them. However, when the state decided that they were going to prosecute him, Patricia, their mother, allegedly brought the girls back into the police department and had them tell the investigators that they lied about everything and they made it all up. The girls felt very trapped. They just really didn't know what to do. They were definitely not allowed to have boyfriends. However, Amina had a crush on a guy, and she began to secretly like have her little boyfriend his name was joseph marino he made her so happy and made her feel less alone however she quickly began to feel very anxious about her relationship with him because she knew her father was watching her eventually their father found a note that amina had wrote joseph when he went up to confront amina this is when she said that she was writing these notes to an imaginary friend however he did not buy it and he was in Raged. I can't imagine how scared she was. He was going off. Her father was trying to get the name of Joseph out of her. However, she was so afraid that if her father found out Joseph's name, that he would find him and harm him, that she refused to give her father his name while he struck her over and over and over again, but she wouldn't tell him that it was Joseph. So Yasser decided to pack up the whole entire house and his family and move everybody 20 miles away into another little town in a new house over this. Because of this, Amina made plans to run away with Joseph, get married in Las Vegas, and start a new life. Joseph dropped out of high school to get a job and start making money so that he could save up enough to help Amina leave. And after Christmas in 2007, Amina and Sarah ran away with their mother, Patricia. They all packed up and went to Tulsa, Oklahoma, where Amina's boyfriend, Joseph, had family at. Now, they were actually really happy for a while, but Patricia, the mother, started having second thoughts, felt bad, and reached out to their father, Yasser. The girls didn't know it. Once they got back in town, Patricia told the girls that they were going to the house and that they were going to be staying there with Yasser, their father. Now, Sarah reluctantly agreed. She said, okay, if you think it's going to be safe, if you think it's going to be fine, and dad's not going to be too upset, too mad, I'll go. But Amina flat out refused. She said, I'm going to go stay at my friend's house. And that's what she did. And then a few days later, Patricia drove to this friend's house where Amina was and began to pound on the door, like pound on the door. Amina, come out, come out, come out. When she finally got to speak to Amina, she told her that she needed to come home. She had to come home. Her father had forgiven her and that she needed to come home and be around the family. And Amina refused. She did not want to go. On the following day, January 1st of 2008, Yasser told the two girls that he wanted to take them out to dinner to make amends. Like he had had a change of heart. He wanted to sit down and speak to them. He missed his daughters. He loved his daughters. And just come to dinner with me is what he said. Patricia stayed at home. However, tragically, Yasser had no intentions on making amends with his daughters or telling them that he had forgiven them or that he was wrong. He actually drove the two girls in his taxi cab some distance. Yeah, and then he killed them. <sighs> well, I didn't want to end on that one. That's just kind of what happened, but I'll be back tomorrow. Um, how do you think of the job tips? I like them. I like them. I think we got to keep going. We got to stay fresh out here, guys. Those are these work from home jobs. Get your home office set up. Nice. Nice. All right. I'll be back tomorrow.